All right. Well, I'm here with Ben. Ben, thank you for your time. I know you're super busy uh, oh, nice. and you're indulging me in my little exercise here. Uh, so what I would like to do is I've sent you all the information on the stock cans and my engine, and I'm going to go ahead and try to pick and explain my pick. And you can either slap me on the head or, or pat me on the head, you know, either, either way. <laughs> I'm happy to do that. Just keep in mind, you know, with when it comes to camshafts, there are so many variables. And I realize that no matter how well um, you do on this video or how well I think I do on this video, there's going to be a million guys on the internet that have a different opinion. And that's perfectly okay. But the reality is at the end of the day, the engine's going to tell you what it wants if you look long enough and you try hard enough. So you take your best guess. I'll tell you what my best guess might be and we'll compare notes. But ultimately, when you get the thing on the dyno, it'll probably tell you what it wants. Okay, cool. All right. Well, uh, comp has done a great job, right? I mean, that list I sent you, those yeah. are all shelf, those are all shelf cams. I mean, yep. there's yeah. what 13 different shelf cams and I'll put the, I'll put them on the screen right now. So you can see, you know, what we're looking at. Um, so just from, you know, conversations you and I've had and knowing we're trying to push this in the upper RPM, uh, I know we're going to need some duration. Uh, going in with Billy and talking about LST lobes, I know he said that a typical LST lobe, generally you want it to read a little higher than what a traditional lobe would as far as duration for the same power band. So I, I probably want to push duration more than I normally would out of, out of this list. Uh, I also know that I probably want some lobe separation angle. Uh, don't want, you know, too tight, and, tight of an angle. Um, they've done a really good job here again. Uh, lift. Uh, well, uh, I'm pretty much stuck at, at 624 because anything that would have anything close to what we want has 624, you know, uh, gross lift or net. Yeah, and just and just keep in mind when you look at that lift of all the lobes that you look at in, within a particular family mm -hmm. that they get designed is to typically have either a constant velocity or a constant acceleration rate, and to do that. What that means is as the duration grows, then the lift has to grow with it to keep the change in lift and the change in um, duration consistent. So that's why you look at your list you sent me, it starts out around 604, ends up about 624, anywhere from like 223 all the way to 267. So um, to keep the behaviors of those families similar, that's why you see that growth there. Yeah. So it's basically like a triangle, right? To keep the angle the same, you have to change both, both sides. You can't just change yeah. one because then you're changing your angle. Okay. Right, right. So, I mean, looking at this, my, my gut is, says be conservative, but I know I need to push a little. So I'm leaning towards, as the shelf cam, the 54, uh, 46311, which is 247 uh, duration intake, 255 exhaust, 624, 624, and 114 lobe separation angle. Okay. That's kind of where I'm thinking probably the shelf cam should be, because uh, we're getting a little aggressive and you go with, with the next one down, and they start saying things on their page about uh, for big displacement, and we only have 305 cubic inches. So, I mean, am I in the ballpark here? Or, or? Um, I'll tell you what I think. I okay. think it would absolutely be in the wheelhouse that I would be looking for if I was looking at a normal LS engine displacement. So you have a couple of things happening here. So you're right. Typically to go upstairs in RPM, you're going to need more duration. But one thing I think a lot of people um, don't always associate is the idea that the engine is really supply and demand. And so you're using a cylinder head that has been ported. I think you have like the Lingenfelter style port. Is that right? I'm looking yes. at it. It's the, it's the so, cathedral port. So it peaks at yep. 302 at 600. Okay. So 300 CFM is a ton of airflow from that cylinder head compared to what it flowed factory. But when it was factory, it was on an engine that was a much larger displacement than what you have. Okay. You've made your engine displacement smaller for any given RPM range. Um, that cylinder head now has more ability to supply. So the way that I typically look at this is that my, my camshaft timing event um, needs to be relative to, to the balance of supply and demand. As my as my engine gets bigger for the same cylinder head, I'm going to have to hold the valve open longer to be able to feed it and vice versa. So I think you're probably in the ballpark on that 247 if you had a 340 or 50 or 60 or 70 inch engine. But the fact that you only have a 300 inch engine, if I'm picking the camshaft, I'm probably going to be considerably smaller than what you're thinking there. Okay. So me trying to be conservative, I actually overshot. Absolutely. I, I really feel okay. that because you've made the engine smaller, especially the stroke. Um, 
if I'm picking this, I would be down in that like 223 range. So something like that 54, 457, 11, 223. And I'll be honest with you, Greg, mm -hmm. I do this type of math. I typically will take like engine displacement times the RPM I want to get to and then compare that to CFM flow the head and all that. And I would come up with a way smaller number than even that 223 cam that I'm suggesting now. However, yeah. one thing I know about these engines from, from real life experience is that the duration of the lobe that we put in there is never what the valve actually sees, especially with all the bending and deflection of the push rod and the rocker and the bolts and all that stuff. So I, I tend to um, often step up a number of, of sizes there in the catalog than what my math purely suggests, you know, and in severe applications where we're doing tons and tons of RPM, it's not uncommon to see 10 or 12 degrees smaller duration at the valve than what the chem chef's asking for. Okay. Okay. Now with the parts I have, I mean, obviously they're, they're not, you know, your crazy spinal tap style parts. These are all right. shell parts. Right. So we're probably going to see a little more deflection because we're spinning it so hard. Right. Possibly, but keep in mind your spring loads are a lot less too. Right. So, um, you know, when you talk about the spinal tap engine, that thing had like 1230 pounds of spring pressure open. So there's a lot of hammer there to hit with. Um, so you may not be as bad as you think, you know, I, okay. I think the biggest disconnect really is that if you have a smaller engine and a bigger cylinder head, you'll find that the engine's going to tell you it doesn't need the valve open as long um, as it traditionally would to fill that cylinder. So that's why I digress just a little bit from you. I wouldn't call that spanking you or, or degrading you or anything. Um, but if it was me and you said, hey, you get one chance, where would you start? Um, I would, I would think somewhere closer to that 220 mark, 223, something like that. But I would be prepared to go up and down from there as we dyno this thing and see what it really wants. Okay. Well, and that, that's one thing that comp has been very gracious about. They have also offered a completely custom cam. Yep. Uh, so if you, well, I mean, we could, we could try to spec that now, or we could wait and see what the engine wants. There's nothing to say we have to order it right now. So I would not need to go to a, to a custom camshaft just yet, given that they have, what do you say, 13 different yeah. available. It's sort of like, eh, you start splitting hairs in there as far as like, oh, I need this to be my one special thing. But if you got a second, um, I got my George Bryce, my buddy George Bryce calls this the AARP calculator. <laughs> yes. If yeah. Got a minute, for sure. Do the math. Yeah. So let's, let's, see. let's do it. All right. So your engine's 305 and you want to, 7,500, right? Yeah. So, uh, 305 times 7,500 divided by 3456 tells us that the engine needs, I'm going to round here to 662 CFM. Now, your cylinder head's got, I think he's 302? 302 at 600, yeah. Okay, but that's each port. And you've got eight of those. Eight times 302 means you have a total of 2,416 CFM available, right? So, Thinking about it logically, our camshaft is the door or the window to um, connecting the demand of the cylinder, pistons going up and down, mm -hmm. supply of the cylinder head. So what we need is the cylinder head um, availability only has the opportunity to fill that cylinder during the number of degrees duration the camshaft is open, right? So looking at our um, choices there, if we start with yours at 247, so okay. two. 47 degrees of duration is out of a total of 720. So dividing that out, I get that's 34.3% of the entire engine cycle, right? So um, what you could do is you could take the 662 CFM required and divide it by 34.3%. So 662 divided by uh, what did I say? 33? 34.3, I believe. 34.3. Okay. 662 uh, divided by 0.343. So you only need to accomplish that 1,930 total CFM. And you have 2,416 available, which means that with, with more CFM available, you don't have to have the camshaft window open as long as you do. Keep in mind, this is all just back of the napkin, theoretical math, doesn't account for lash and you know deformation of your parts and bending and all that. But at this point, we're way overkill on what you would need. So okay. I have not done this math yet, so I might look stupid too, but let me try the 223 here. Okay. A uh, 223 degrees out of 720 is only 30.9% uh, of the cycle, so about 4% under there. So 662 CFM, of, and keep in mind, that's also assuming 100% volumetric efficiency for the engine. Okay. 
I'm going to divide that by 0 0.309. And then it says that I need 2,142. So still my 223 shows up as bigger than you actually need. But keep in mind that um, what you end up calculating here will mm -hmm. all be smaller than what the engine really needs um, because basically you're going to have to account for that bending and deflection and push rods and whatever. So, um, you know, that, uh, that 30.9 theoretically you could go all the way down to that 215 degree camshaft but i think you're going to find a point where it gets to be too small because we don't account for the bending and stuff so that's how i ended up at that 220 223 mark okay uh one one thing i see right off the bat that that i have a question about now so sure. we're dropping down to a uh, that's a 610 617 lift uh yep. globe we have 660 uh 660 springs in there okay. uh, are we going to be too far away from coil bind and allow too much movement or is that within our, our well, consider that the difference is you were going to be 624 and now you're going to be six uh what is it 14 i think so yeah. you're talking about 10 thou difference in lift so whatever distance to bind you had before you're going to be 10 thousands farther unless you sl slide a 15 thou shim in there or something but your point is correct in that we care way more about the distance to bind than we actually do about what the loads are when we get there. So if it was me, I would shim it up to have the same distance to bind no matter which of those lifts I was using. Okay. So, I mean, that's, that's definitely easy enough to do. I mean, shims are, shims are easy. Yep. Um, well, cool. So, well, that, this is awesome. I mean, I, I, thought I was being conservative and I actually overshot. Uh, I've never, I've never been a cam picker. Like I've, never, uh, I've, I've, it's been my experience that almost everybody, myself included, um, we tend to over camshaft stuff and the engine will surprise you. The better the cylinder head is, the less cam you actually need. Um, or if you have a, the same head and a smaller engine, you just find out it just doesn't need to be open as long as it does. And we give away so much of the bottom end and we give away so much torque that we could have had for free without sacrificing the top end. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this thing wants 275. But I kind of doubt it. I think we'll get this thing on the dyno and you'll find out um, we can probably be even smaller than what we're talking about and not give up a whole bunch. See, that's that's super interesting. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I was going to cheat. I was going to run everything through DinoSim. <laughs> I've uh, I've been talking with Billy and DinoSim can't really accurately model the LST lobe yet. Um, not only that, but it doesn't accurately, accurately account for things like push rod bending and rock arm deflection and, you know, the whip effect that happens, you know, think about when you, you take that push rod, if you, if you bend it, mm -hmm. it it's a diving board at some point it's coming back and you don't know what that RPM is going to be. Um, it's not uncommon. You'll be on the dyno sometimes and right before the valves start floating, it'll suddenly make more power. Well, that's because it's getting way more lift than it's supposed to have. It's lofting and and but it's it's dirt biking it right. It's landing right. nicely. So yeah. for one one brief window in time, it's working great. Yeah. So you go in there and you fix that part, and then it makes less power, and you're like, oh, that's no fun. I want to go back to the way it was. You know, uh, that's what I, that's what I would share with you right now, based on my experience and a little bit of uh, AARP work here on the calculator. My gut says you're going to end up being way smaller than you think, simply because the engine is a lot smaller. Okay, well, I'm I'm totally okay with that and making noise. Sorry, just, uh, just hold any just hold any calls for me. <laughs> um, so, so then we're looking at which I I we're looking at uh, four fifty seven or four fifty eight. So are we looking at the six ten six seventeen or the six fourteen six twenty one? I could go either way. If it was me, I think I would look at the two twenty three two thirty one six ten six seventeen on that one twelve. Okay. I think that will um, that will give you a pretty healthy bottom end without sacrificing a bunch on the top. And okay. Prepared to go up and down from there, swap a couple of cams out and try it. But that's where I would be starting based on engine size and cylinder head flow. Okay, very cool. Well, I'm like I said, I trust you. I'm not a cam picker. This Don't do that. I, no, <laughs> please. I've I've seen I've seen what happens on your dyno, so I trust you. Uh, so I'm great. I'm good with that as a starting point for this project, and I. I, I feel like it's going to be funny because comp uh, comp offered a, cu a custom cam as well. And I'm going to tell them, Hey guys, we may not need that. So. Well, I mean, only because job. they have so many options there already, but um, a lot of it comes down to, you know, what can they do with the existing cores that they have? You're not going to probably find a core that you can do a 223, a 223, 231 would say 116 or 118 lobe separation angle. Cause they don't have any, you, you couldn't move the lobe that far without cutting through the case hardening on the on the base circle so yeah 
I mean, I, I guess I'm, I'm sure we could, you know, some crazy billet tool steel, custom sure. harden. But I mean, at that point, we're talking about what a $1,200 camshaft. Yeah, you're going to end up with a cam that costs more than the whole engine, right? Yeah, like that's not, that's not <laughs> what this is about, right? This is about right. using regular available parts. Yeah. And given the list that they have, we could be off a long way and still not need a custom camshaft because they have so many opportunities for us. That's very cool. And, you know, that I, I, I hate to sound like I'm, I'm like sucking up, but that's, I think, partially due to what you and Billy did with Spinal Tap. I mean, you guys. I mean, I just, I just ran it. Billy did all the hard work, you know, and uh, I, I just sort of wrote checks here and there and then screwed it all together and ran it on the dyno. I just hold my breath for about 60 seconds while I pulled the throttle. So uh he did he did the vast majority of work on that i can't take a lot of credit there but it was yeah yes you can i mean you guys i i'm not minimizing what what billy did but yeah <laughs> it was yeah. a team effort for sure yeah so all right well cool well thank you i'm i'm gonna go order a cam right now uh awesome. and it's and it's nice in this environment to be able to order a shelf cam i'm not gonna lie no kidding you're uh, not lying man the fact that it's available is pretty darn awesome because it's tough out there right now yeah so Sweet. Well, with this, uh, I, th I think we're getting a lot closer to getting this thing on the dyno. Very cool. I'm excited to help you and uh, see how, how terrible my cam choice is. <laughs> well, well, let's, let's just hope it stays together on the dyno and I don't do something stupid, like forget to torque the head bolts or something or head studs. Yeah. Cause I have studs. I don't, as have long bolts. as you get the rod bolts tight, the rest will have the rest of you. <laughs> All right. So I will remember that only Ben said, you'll only have to tighten the rod bolts. That's it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank right you. Yeah, I appreciate no problem, it. As always, uh, happy to help and uh, happy to learn.